Hello all! So I've been really excited to get this video out to you. I've been mentioning here and there that I wanted to do a dual review of Troll Hunters by Guillermo del Toro and Daniel Cross um, versus sort of like the Netflix original TV show also entitled Troll Hunters which are the same thing. Um, so what I'm just going to do is review this and then I'm going to do like a voiceover piece. You know what I do for some of my uh, film wrap ups? that sort of style for the TV show and then in that one I'll talk a bit more about like a comparison sort of thing with the book um, but for now in this section I am just going to be talking about the book. So this was a really fun sort of troll hunting adventure middle grade a little bit higher than middle grade um, story which showcased some quite unexpectedly emotional family scenes and um, friendships that seemed unlikely <laughs> you'll understand if you read or watch the show <laughs> so in this book we are following Jim Sturgis um, I will probably go over um, like the synopsis of the show because it does differ um, when I get to that point but let me just read you the synopsis of the book very quickly so Jim Sturgis is your typical teen complete with an embarrassingly overprotective dad best friend named Tubby and a crush on a girl who doesn't know he exists but everything changes for him when a 45 year old mystery resurfaces threatening the lives of everyone in his seemingly sleepy town. Children are going missing again and it falls to Jim to team up with a band of unlikely heroes to battle the monsters of the night, monsters of dangerous appetites. Um, so basically it explains this at the very start of the book, this isn't a spoiler. So there is this like milk carton epidemic when Jim's dad was a boy and it saw like a load of children in that time disappear and Jim's dad who I think is also called Jim his brother was one of the children that disappeared and it basically scarred him for life hence why he's so overprotective over Jim Jr <laughs> um, and that's kind of like the premise of the book and I guess it will explain a lot of the story it kind of carries a lot of the story so you're you've got a main scene where you're thrown back in time um, to see how this event unfolded and then you're sort of brought back to like I guess present day following our teen protagonist yeah so that's sort of how it runs so I gave this novel a 3.5 stars I will say that I did enjoy it but sadly not as much as I was expecting to I think one of the main reasons for that was that we're reading from this sort of younger uh, protagonist's perspective but I felt like Jim never really felt the age that he was if that makes sense that's a really strange thing to say but hold on let me try and explain myself so the vibe itself around Jim and the way he um, spoke was really confusing I just feel like um maybe the authors didn't because I know Guillermo del Toro doesn't usually do like children's stuff does he but I feel like he couldn't him or a combination of the other author I don't know I just felt like they couldn't portray a child or a younger person's voice accurately enough he came up with some weird like florally vocabulary that I feel like a 15 year old wouldn't have known to say or just wouldn't have spoken and I do feel like when we're following Jim in his scenes that is what I would consider present day and I just don't think kids talk like that <laughs> I mean I'm 21 now so perhaps I'm not a kid and I can't speak for that but back in my day <laughs> five years ago when I was roughly that age <laughs> We didn't speak as florally as he sometimes does and it was weird because sometimes he would speak like that Other times you'd snap back and think oh, yeah, he is talking like a teenager, especially when he was hanging out with his friend Tubby, but It was just it was weird. It was just it was just weird <laughs> I feel like I feel like coming back to Tubbs his friend He was just more of a believable teenage character. Do you know what I mean? Like he'd come out with all these witty funny humor He was definitely like the more comic relief um, character of the book, but he just felt more Believable to me. I feel like he although he probably wasn't supposed to be um, he actually carried a lot of the story in Just his humor and the way he was now don't get me wrong, he did annoy me quite a bit um, throughout the story but I was definitely appreciative of him there because I felt like he had this sort of balancing aura, I guess. <laughs> so I'm not sure how much Del Toro had in terms of influence in this book but I feel like sometimes I could pick up on parts of him. For example, um, you would have like a really randomly placed object in the scene that was described by um, Jim but in a really kind of dark way like oh, it's, it's really weird to try and describe it but I wish I'd 
made a note of an example and I was just like well that was so out of place and odd that's definitely something that Del Toro put in there do you know what I mean like that just sounds like something that would be in his movie like a, a very minor detail that you'd see in one of his like horror films and I'm thinking that was so out of place in this you know it's just, I don't know if it flowed very well but, um, but because of those details and again sometimes the way Jim spoke and his character and just the story how it fleshed out in general I would this is a tricky one I would describe it as a slightly older middle grade read but maybe not quite YA because I don't know if there was like a middle part between middle grade and YA, YA like now we have um a bridge between um what is it YA and adult we have new adult I guess that's like the in-between thing if there was something like that for this um that would better describe the genre because it's a bit of a weird a weird one and I think the show as well I'll probably maybe mention that in a bit has a um it curses every now and then like it says things like crap in that and I feel like because of that it's also a slightly older show but at the same time the general feel is not for adults it does feel like a children's show it's just really weird I don't know the balance is for me a little bit off so I've got to say um the character development and the progress of the story I do feel like sometimes it was predictable and obviously that's that's annoying i know this sounds like i am bashing it i'm not bashing it at all the funny thing is i actually really did enjoy this i thought it was a fun easy like children or i don't know middle grade ish kind of read it was adventure it was fun i enjoyed it but i'm nitpicking because for example guillermo del toro i really enjoy it and i think i had high hopes far far high hopes for him in the creation of this book and I didn't quite meet those ho those high hopes. <laughs> so I think that's where I'm going to stop the review for the book here. Because I find myself getting a little bit rambly. I have actually got a full written review on Goodreads. It's got a few more points in here that I didn't mention in this video today. So please check that out if you want to know some more stuff. Um, I, end up, I might end up referring to it briefly in the voiceover in a minute. Um, so check that out just to keep up with what I'm talking about basically. But now I'm going to leave you to the voiceover of the TV show Troll Hunters enjoy <laughs> okay so after reading the book i decided to obviously check out the netflix show um i was really surprised by the art style actually i think i was expecting the more traditional cartoon i wasn't expecting it to have i guess the budget to create such a good art style do you know what i mean i was expecting more of a simple style which obviously doesn't always mean it has a good or bad budget it just depends on the style but do you know what i mean anyway um in terms of the actual story i wasn't sure if it was taking place after the events of the book or if they were going to do like the whole book events and then spiral off but it seems to be perhaps its own thing well like kind of i don't really know so the sinister sometimes uncomfortable dealings of troll hunter wasn't used in this either basically it has the same main character and friend with some of the other characters at least in name but different accents etc different personality traits such like that but jim lives with his mum instead of his dad a major character that serves for a lot of the plot is missing and his life and personality is very different to the jim that we know from the book um some events are briefly in the tv show or they're just not there at all or they happen faster than they did in the novel to get to maybe a different end result or i don't know slightly skewed um which you'd expect for a show adaptation to be honest or like it's so much slower that i forgot about it being there in the show it, it was just a really weird mix of emotions and mix of things that i wasn't expecting i did find that the depiction of the troll city was way too pretty but again i can understand that makes for a more appealing visual especially for a younger audience who i assume this is somewhat you know targeted at so i feel like they took the same concept but for the tv show made it into something perhaps more watchable for a slightly younger audience but it has me torn on whether i liked that or not i think they're both by dreamworks but it definitely gives me the how to train your dragon vibes um oh i really did like the attention to sound through the use of earphones like left to right etc for like when car or a person was moving across like the screen from one section to the next it's like a virtual reality but like auditory reality <laughs> i do feel like some of the show's differences works way better for the story and it's almost what the book should have been such as what the troll device is used for i won't say any more of that because i don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen or read the story um it definitely trumps that of what the book uses it as but i will say that the episodes seem to be around 13 to 26 um 
episodes per season and just over 20 minutes so I thought this would probably be something I watched in the background like I tend to do with random episodes of like Teen Titans for example. Um, I think it's just going to be two seasons for the tweets um, of the writers that I saw on Twitter obviously. I do think that series one should have stopped at episode 13 as that was quite a game changer in last episode and it really had me hooked. I think they could have definitely used that to be like all oh, stay tuned for season two but it carried on. Um, there's a lot of themes surrounding powerful eyes and it definitely gives me the eye of Sauron vibes from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Random, I know. Um, but I don't know, man. It's like the same but different, as contradictory as it sounds. But coming from the book and expecting maybe something, I don't know, consistently similar, I've got to say I prefer the way the story is delivered. Um, but if I had nothing to compare it to, I'd say the show is generally decent to watch, but it's definitely one of those rare times where I really feel like it would be more enjoyable if I was the target, uh, target a why can't I speak, if I was the target audience age, which is something that I never really think about, but I definitely felt like I was I was missing something because of that. Um, it's more of a light-hearted show with not too much substance, I feel, but the finale was definitely smashing for series one at least, um, if, if you excuse the pun. So yeah, I don't know if I'll update my thoughts if I watch season two before or after this is uploaded. I might put my thoughts in the description or I might just save that for like a wrap up or something. But yeah, that's what I thought of the TV show in comparison to the book. Okay guys, so that's what I thought of both the book and the TV show Troll Hunters. Do let me know if you've checked out either of these or perhaps both. Um, do you find them conflicting in themes like I did? Or do you think they're just nice separate things on their own that you can enjoy or perhaps not enjoy depending on your preference um, as separate, you know, completely different things? What do you think? Perhaps you preferred one over the other or I don't know. Tell me your opinions, I would love to know. Um, but without further ado, I will let you enjoy the rest of your day. See you later, take care, have a great time, farewell. <laughs>